Hi everyone, so in the previous video, we have derived the equation which relates the macroscopic gas pressure to the microscopic motion of gas particles. So in this video, we will be analyzing this equation qualitatively to understand what this equation means. Then from there, we further relate it to other quantities like temperatures or translational kinetic energy just to get a big picture of how everything connects together. So let's get it started. Before we start, I would like to talk about how I will structure my content for this video. So you can see here there's a, a series of uh, things being defined here in pink. So that will represent uh, like a glossary list. Glossary. Yeah, a glossary list for you to, to refer to the terms and to refer to the symbol just in case you're not sure what the symbols are. Okay, so this is how I structure my uh, presentation here. You can see a label A pressure, B translational kinetic energy, C temperature, and D root mean square speed. So these four will form the pillars of our discussion today. And these four things we call it uh, physical quantities. Okay, so these are the four different quantities. And I'll write something in this space that connects the two quantities. I'll write the equation that connects these two quantities. So if I write something here, the final equation that I obtain will be an equation that connects pressure and translational kinetic energy. So if I write a derivation here, then that derivation will be connecting translational kinetic energy with temperature. And that's the same situation for relating temperature with root mean speed. So that's how I will use these four sides of the square of the rectangle. So the inside of the rectangle will be the concept that I use. So I'll write the concept that I use inside this. So this, if I write something here, this will be the concept that I use to relate pressure and root mean speed. So if I write something here, it will be the concept that I use to relate pressure and translational kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, we'll do this and slowly I think you'll get the idea. Okay. So the first thing is, uh, in the previous video, we have done a bit of derivation. Uh, not a bit, it's actually a long derivation. You deserve to say a lot of derivation. So you end up with the answer where P is equal to 1 over 3 N M square V root mean square. Square, oh sorry, there's no square here. Yeah. Over V. Okay, so that's the equation that we get. So N is the total number of gas molecules. M will be the mass of one single gas molecule. The VRMS will be the root mean speed of the gas molecules. And V will be the volume of the gas container. So usually we express it in this form, which is something more friendly to us for our derivation later. Okay, so we usually write bring the volume to the other side. Okay, so what kind of qualitative insights can we get from, from this equation? What can we know about this uh, if we look at this equation? The first thing is, if we have more particles, then we will have greater pressure. More particles is represented by increase in N, then you will have greater pressure. But I believe you can imagine it so if it's more particles, it'll be more packed. So there will be more collisions happen. So of course your pressure will be increasing. Okay. The second thing that we can know is that if we have massive particles, massive particles are particles with greater mass. Huh? Uh, massive in English and massive in physics is a bit different. So uh, greater mass. So what will happen is you will have greater change in momentum. Okay, greater change in momentum because uh, our change in momentum, change of momentum is 2mv. So our, and it's related to m, so you will see a greater change in momentum. In that case, what will happen is you will have greater pressure because our pressure comes from force per unit area. Then force per unit area, that force comes from change of momentum. Okay, so you have to know how everything links together. 
If you have problem to relate it, what you should do is you should watch back the video where we derive. Then you know why massive particles cause greater change of momentum and why greater change of momentum causes greater force and greater force causes greater pressure. It's a step-by-step -step sequence that I think is important to understand. Okay, the third thing that I'm going to say is if you have greater VRMS, means that you have greater root mean square speed, what will happen is your pressure will increase as well. Okay, so uh, you can think of it as if it's moving faster, then you hit the gas container harder. Okay, if you move faster, you should collide. If you collide faster with the collide harder with the gas container, so that will make the uh, the force exerted by the gas particles on the container wall to be greater. The force exerted be greater, so that equip, that is equivalent to greater pressure. Okay. So that's how we uh that's some of the insights that we can get just from analyzing the shape of this equation. N is if n increase, p increase. If m increase, p will increase. If we are mass increase, p will increase. We might we can talk about uh the volume of gas container, but that's usually what we talk about in the ideal gas law. So I don't want to interrupt. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, mess things up. So I leave that to the ideal gas law. Okay, so we have finished uh, connecting pressure and root mean square speed. So what we'll do late now is we want to relate this pressure thing with translational kinetic energy. So what's the what's the concept that we use? Okay, I'll write it inside. Concept right inside. The concept that we use is translational kinetic energy is equals to half m v r m s square okay so it's the same kinetic energy formula that you've met you have met since your secondary school or even the earlier chapters it's the same kinetic energy just that this time it's a root mean square speed because there's a lot of particles so we use this as a kind of like an average okay the root mean square speed so how can we proceed we proceed by taking the last equation that we have here this pv equals to 1 over 3 n m v r m s square so what we do is we copy it down here and then after that we do a bit of manipulation you can see here there's m v r m s square m v r m s square so uh, you can change this to become 2 k translational equals to m v r m s Square. In that case, you can replace the mv square here and replace it with 2 translational kinetic energy. So now if you, uh, if you make it neater, everything nicer, then you become 2 over 3 num total number of gas molecules times the translational kinetic energy of a molecule. So this is the translational kinetic energy of a molecule. If you multiply it by n, the total number of molecules, then it will become the total translational kinetic energy of the gas. Okay, this is for one single gas molecule. This is the total number of gas molecules. So if you multiply these two, two, two things together, you will get the total translational kinetic energy of the gas itself. It's no longer one gas molecule, it's the whole gas itself, the total translational kinetic energy of the gas itself. If you multiply N and KTR here. Okay, so the thing is, this equation here, it's not required in your syllabus, but I think it's a very important intermediate step to lead us to the other equation. So I'll write it down here, but I won't analyze it further. I'll leave it just like this. Okay, so the next step that we are going to do is we want to relate this KTR, this translational kinetic energy here. We want to relate it to temperature. So what concept are we going to use is we are going to use uh, ideal gas equation. So if you have learned in the previous subchapter, there are two versions, PV equals to NRT. Another version will be PV equals to NKVT. 
Okay, KB, K subscript B here, it's Boltzmann constant. Okay, uh, it's being stated here, it's 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 23 joule per Kelvin. So, uh, it, it's like a per particle counterpart of the gas constant. If you are in per mole kind of calculation, then R will uh, be the thing we use. If you are in a per particle kind of calculation, then you use Boltzmann constant. This is for mole calculation. This is for per particle kind of calculation. Slowly you get the idea. Okay. So what we do now here is you can see that you have, uh, you have PV over here and you have PV over here is as well. So what you can do is you equate the two PV, then you end up with something like this. 2 over 3 and translational kinetic energy equals to nRT. So this is what you get now. So if you move the coefficient in front to the other side, then become 3 over 2 nRT. Okay. As I said just now, this thing here represents the total translational kinetic, translational kinetic energy of the gas in the container. Total translational gas, total translational kinetic energy of the gas in the container because you multiply the by the total number of gas molecules, and it's equal to three over two n r. T. Okay, so greater temperature, you will have greater total translational kinetic energy. So this is how we derive the first equation. But since I write, there's another concept, there's another per particle kind of calculation. So let me show you how to do the per particle kind of translational kinetic energy. So again, we see that the PV is still the same. So we can equate the two things. So what's the, what's the result of our equate? Uh, we can write 2 over 3 n kpr equals to n kb t. So if you see here that the total number of molecules it exists on the left hand side and the right hand side as well. So we can cross that out. Then if you bring the coefficient to the right hand side, then you find that the kin translational kinetic energy of a gas molecule. A gas molecule is equal to 3 over 2 kb t. So this one is kpr for one gas molecule. Okay, and for that it depends just on the temperature only. Uh, Boltzmann constant is a constant, 3 over 2 is a constant as well. So the translational kinetic energy of one gas molecule depends only just on the temperature only. Okay, so we can see here now that translational kinetic energy uh, depends on the temperature. Okay, these two things are very highly dependent on each other. So actually, uh, this equation here has a very important statement that, uh, that we should know. It actually implies that, let me write it down first. It actually implies Okay, so increase in the temperature of gas is due to the increase in translational kinetic energy of the gas molecules. So if your gas molecules has a greater amount of translational kinetic energy, it actually will cause the temperature of the gas to be greater. Okay, The translational kinetic energy of the gas molecules determine the temperature of the gas. Okay, So when we say what is temperature of gas, it is actually the total, it is actually heavily dependent on the translational kinetic energy of the gas molecules. If you have gas molecules that is moving faster, you have greater translational kinetic energy. If you have greater translational kinetic energy, that will mean your uh, gas here will be higher in temperature, which means it will be hotter. 
Okay, so uh, just in case you are not sure uh, about this, translational kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of an object when it's moving across space. So this is called translational movement. Okay, this is called rotation and this is vibration. In uh, when we talk about uh, particles internal energy, there will be translational, there will be rotational, and there will be vibrational. But this one is only focusing on the kinetic energy contributed by the motion of the particles across space. So we call it translation. It's related to the translation that you learn in maths. Okay, so we have successfully relate translational kinetic energy with temperature using the concept of ideal gas law. We arrive at this equation, which is uh, the kinetic the translational kinetic energy of one gas molecule is equal to 3 over 2 times Boltzmann constant times the temperature of the gas itself. So now we have successfully do this, what we want to do is our next step which is relating temperature back to the root mean square speed. Okay, we have fully gone through one now. The last step will be relating temperature and root mean square speed. How, which, which concepts should we use? Okay. Again, uh, the concept that we'll be using is kinetic translational kinetic energy equals to half m v r m s squared. Exactly the same concept that we use on the left hand side over here. So I, I designed it that, that way because it's easier for you to remember. The center one, the concept will be uh, translational kinetic energy. Upper one will be derivation. Bottom one will be ideal gas law. So they will be short, short, long, long. The words, the number of words. So I, I hope the, the way I designed this can make you easier to remember how you should structure everything. Okay. But never mind, let's go to uh, say how we are how are we going to use this concept here to determine our last equation. Okay, so what should we do is uh, let's bring out our, let's just substitute this k, this translational kinetic energy into our equation. So you have n, then you have your translational kinetic energy, which is from here. Okay, I'm seeing this part. So this k translational, I will replace it with half mv squared. So half m v rms squared. Then it will be equals to 3 over 2 and rt okay this is not done yet we still have a lot of things to do so the first step that we can do is we can change this total number of molecules here we can change it to become number of moles times the avogadro number okay so if you are not sure why what, what does it mean you have to refer back to your chemistry class so basically, the, the definition of one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles. Okay, it can be molecules, it can be atoms, okay? But one mole is defined by uh, the number of molecules should be 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So essentially, if I have the number of moles of particles in the gas container, number of number of moles of gas particles in the gas container and multiply with the Avogadro number essentially this multiplication will end up with the total number of gas particles so now what I'm doing is I'm breaking this total number of gas particles to be number of moles times the Avogadro number so let's continue to write everything down so you have your half m v r m s square equals to 3 over 2 and rt so the next step that i will do now is i will cross out things that are identical on both sides that's n then the next thing that i will do is i will multiply okay this is a bit tricky i'll multiply the avogadro number with the mass of a single gas uh, gas molecule so if the mass of one single gas molecule is small m and I multiply it by Avogadro number, which is the number of gas molecules in one mole of gas, 
Essentially, the product of these two things will form the molar mass. Because molar mass is the mass of one mole of stuff. So if I take a mass of one gas particles and I times it with the number of particles in one mole of gas, essentially I'll get the mass of one mole of gas. And that's the molar mass of the gas. So molar mass uh, in physics we use capital R, eh, capital M, sorry. It is capital M. So the multiplication of Avogadro number and small m, we will have half capital M BRMS square equals to 3 over 2 RT. Now if we leave the BRMS at one side and we bring everything to the other side, so that will be BRMS square equals to 3 uh, equals to 3 RT over capital M. So the last step will be we remove this square through a square root of both sides and you have square root of 3 RT over M. Okay, just want to be really really clear this M here stands for the molar mass. Okay, so that's when we are using this equation here, then we connect it with this concept over here. So what happened is we use this equation instead, but we connect it with the same concept that we say we want to use here. So what will happen is, let's try. So we can see here that we can, uh, we have the same symbol here, translational kinetic energy for this equation here and this concept that we're going to use. So essentially, we can just do a simple substitution and it will be half mv rms squared equals to 3 over 2 kbt, Boltzmann constant times the temperature. So what can I do now is I can just move everything to the other side. Okay, there's no uh, complicated things to do. I move everything to the other side, then it will be v rms squared equals to 3 kb t and if i divide it by m and then what's the next step is i square root both sides so the answer will be 3 kb t over small m so this small m here i have to specify is for one gas molecule okay so both of these equations are equivalent to each other. It's just that if you are doing calculation in terms of like per mole kind of calculation, you are given the molar mass instead of the mass of one single particle. What you can do is you use the gas constant R instead of the Boltzmann constant Kb. So that's for per mole calculation. If your all your calculation are in terms of per molecule and you are given the mass of the one single molecule, then this equation here will be a better equation to use to find the root mean square speed. So there are two versions. They are equivalent to each other, just that one is more convenient for per mole calculation, one is more convenient for per particle kind of calculation. So uh, this is a very important equation here because it relates the root mean square speed and the temperature. So what can we know about this equation is actually, um, Let's write it down first. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to say here is if you look at this equation here, you can see that uh, if, the, if the VRMS goes up, if you have a greater VRMS, it means by the particle is uh, fast moving. Okay, if something is fast moving, it actually means that the particles is more energetic. Okay, how do you know it's more energetic? You look back to this equation here. If you have greater faster moving particles, then you have greater uh, translational kinetic energy. So a fast moving particle, we can call it a very energetic particle as well. So if it's if the particles or if the gas particles uh, for the gas, all of them are very energetic. We, uh, we know that that gas itself will have a greater temperature. Then that means 
if you have energetic particles for your gas, then your gas will be hot. That's why all these three things are really intimately related to each other. You have fast moving particles, it means your particles are energetic. They contain of a lot of energy. If something contains a lot of energy, it means uh, you have a greater temperature. What kind of energy is it? It's translational kinetic energy. Refer back to this statement. Increase in temperature of a gas is due to the increase in translational kinetic energy of the gas molecules. So if you have fast moving particles, you will have greater uh, translational kinetic energy. If you have greater transla translational kinetic energy, you will result in increase in temperature. Therefore, you have greater temperature, which makes the gas hotter. So the speed, the translational kinetic energy, and the temperature are all intimately related to each other. So, okay, I will draw a cycle to close it up. Okay, so now I have derived all the equations, uh, uh, most of the equations that you need for this chapter 13, uh, which is on kinetic theory of gases. So in the next video, we will talk about degree, and free, degree of freedom and we will talk about internal energy. So that's all for this video. I hope you find it helpful. Thank you very much.